This is the Wheel of Time Spoilers Podcast. Hi. Hi, welcome to Wheel of Time Spoilers Podcast. <laughs> the live recording. Episode 389. Wow. 389. Wow. We just did 388 uh, with tangents, and this is 389 as we start The Path of Daggers. Yes, which as a reminder to our online audience, you can still buy an autographed version of Path of Daggers through the auction. Buy. You can bid on a autographed Path of Daggers from us. Let um, me clarify. That is autographed by me and Aradia. Us. We not, it. not by anyone important. No, no, no. You're saying that I'm not important? Oof. That did sound like that, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You're important to me. Uh, so yeah, Path of Daggers. Path. Eighth book, we're here. So, and it has been a minute since we've done this, uh, which I was mentioning earlier. So, uh, forgive us any missteps. Also, sleep was some sleep was had last night. Did so you sleep last night? I I did sleep. Yeah. I I did, I did pass out. Yes. Yeah. And I am now running on coffee. Me too. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> we so I was just common. chugging it. Ah, <laughs> nice to meet you. The con has been a blast, right? Yes. Yeah. E- everyone, you're amazing. Give it up for yourselves. <laughs> um, a huge shout out to Rob for all the technical work Seriously. he has done. That man is a miracle on steroids. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of amazing volunteers yeah. who are each indispensable, but Rob might be the most indispensable. I, I'm going to have to throw Amanda out there. Talia out there as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. She's also just running this thing. Uh, left yeah. And right, we, so. we really were just clowns. Right. We, we just show up and we look pretty. <laughs> we paint our faces fine. and, you know, <laughs> side juggle a little bit and, and then we move on. I did put on the wig. Yes, that yeah, was fun. Yeah, uh, that's the thing. I, it was a good wig. <laughs> <laughs> should I should I just be podcasting in the wig? Oh God. Ugh. Ugh. Well, it's not as bad to, as I puns, think it's in Coos Bay. If someone wants to run and go get it. <laughs> and Neil takes off. Oh no! <laughs> I was hoping that was too much effort. <laughs> that's why I said someone, not you in particular. <laughs> We had, I mean, the Michael Kramer Kate writing reading was amazing. That they was stayed really with fun. us for an hour and a half they're answering so questions. Sweet. More than they were an hour and forty five yeah. minutes by the time they're it was just done. they're the sweetest they're nerds. God, the artists' live streams, all three of them have just been really nice. The, they're just beautiful um, work, and to see the people like working in real time means a lot to me. You know, I've done a couple of panels. The uh, <laughs> yeah. the uh, the trial was just funny I as had anything. so much yeah, fun I didn't know anything about that other than that you had a wig everything else was was new to me <laughs> it was very fun <laughs> um yeah and again uh, shout out to Recapa for writing that yes. one I mean j- just brilliant uh Hilarious. if you're not watching Brian on uh wheel talks okay singular talk wheel talk yes um it's with Recapa I mean so much good stuff and uh Brian's now putting out a few ep- uh, sh- episodes just as Brian Oh, really? Yeah, oh, cool, yeah. cool. So that's, nice. That's There's also nice. Tarval and After Dark. Yes. Which, again, features that brilliantly hilarious writing. Yes. Uh, as well as Jess, who did a ton of work uh, to make this con yes, happen. Yes, Jess and, helped a lot. And um, Bliss, who did not. <laughs> 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 um, but he, he does a great YouTube channel as well. So Anything else about the con? Um, the costumes have all been amazing. Costumes I really amazing. enjoyed seeing everyone in costume. I was actually able to eat food this year. The last time we... The last time we were in person, I was so anxious the entire time. I didn't yeah. eat. Um, yep. This time I've eaten. So that is good. That's a plus. <laughs> but uh, yeah, otherwise the con has been, the con has just been amazing. It's been really good to get to hang out with all of you in person. And um, yeah, just really, really glad to be able to have this sort of experience with all of you. It's been very special. Yeah. And I, how can I forget my favorite part? All of you, right? Like getting <laughs> to talk to you, not nearly enough because I also have to do all this technical work. And But uh, I would, l- you know, I can't, the nights uh, that we hung out last night and what I expect to happen in about an hour is going to be a blast. Yes, yep. very much. The real reason that we get together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, just with sh- that, let's read in. Yeah. Oh my God, um, reading us just in. as a little bit of context, this book was published in 1998. <laughs> just is that like one book a year average that he was maintaining? Um, and the dedication for this book is for Harriet, my light, my life, my heart, forever. Which is just. Mm, I love that dedication. I the dedications are so sweet. Um, but yeah, I did, you didn't even bring your copy of the book. It's, this is just it's all it's all my copy. I have the digital copy. Oh, I, that's this is how I is. always do. That's why I have my laptop in front of me, so I, I can I don't actually see read the, book. the behind the scenes of how you do this. Oh yeah, I know you're always <laughs> looking at my face. You never actually see yeah, the process. Yeah, no, I never see your work. Oh well. I mean, I have a physical book. Right, and you've ruined it. I I, I have added value. 
by defacing it. That's one way to look at it. Yeah. I, I'm going to auction this off for like $1,000 by itself in a couple of years. Keep thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> um, meanwhile, I have my highlights all synced between my phone, my different computers. Um, mm, yeah, fancy. yeah, yeah. And I can take notes in there. And it's great. And I don't have to destroy a physical copy in trees. I'm telling you, it's adding value. <laughs> We are procrastinating. Yes, we are. We're not used to seeing our audience staring at us. Yeah, yeah, it's giving us a second. We're just like, okay. Usually I'm just looking at your face. Right. And And that's that's funny. We keep looking over at each other because we're used to to actually seeing each other. I'm going to read us in. Uh, Prophecies. Well, sayings. Who would sup with the mighty must climb the path of daggers. Anonymous notation found inked in the margin of manuscript history, believed to date to the time of Otter Hawkwing and the last days of the Toven conclaves, followed immediately by, on the heights, all paths are paved with daggers. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. Um, which, I mean, I think feel like that's just a very simple commentary on we're not dealing with village boys anymore. We have power and politics and death and there... Every, there's going to be death and blood, right? There are daggers. <laughs> yeah. I also looked up um, the nation of Tova. Yeah. Because obviously I did. Brigida and Matt make some comments about Tovan uh, high counselors or something like that. But the nation of Tova is actually a precursor to Kyrian. Mm. They were not ruled by kings. They were ruled by conclaves. And they were bordering the nation of Tarvalon when this was written. And they were one of the kingdoms of the free years. And when Tova fell apart, the events around that sparked the Game of Houses, according to in-world lore. The reason Kyrian is the way it is is because of the nation of Tova, who also clearly helped inspire Sean Chan because this was before Sean Chan was colonized by mm, the Westlanders. That's, that makes a good point, Eastlanders, yeah, because that was only a thousand years ago. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so there's a lot of Game of Houses Sean Chan overlap here that is... I, I didn't realize that until I did research for this, but... So how do we square that with the the saying that the um, White Tower invented the Game of Houses? Do we think that's just like they're better at it or they do it more? I think it's like them taking credit. Fair enough. Well... Because I yeah. Sedai. Right. Also, they may have helped invent it in the falling apart of Tova. That makes in, sense. In what becomes Kyrie and the Aes Sedai may have been very integral to that whole process. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Advisors. Yeah. Well, we're just advising. <laughs> uh, and so we start the prologue. I mean, there's, there's a great map, the standard map. D- the usual map. And uh, deceptive appearances. And our symbol is the snake in the wheel. What's the deceptive appearances part of that? Because the borderlanders have been trying to hide their progress across the, the continent gotcha. since leaving the borderlands. They're also trying to hide their purpose. Right. right. Yeah, because... You know, we know that the purpose is based among a prophecy, an Arafelan prophecy, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. But that's really why they're down here and they're trying to hide that. Yeah. There's also a lot of stuff about how um, the people that Athenaella is looking at, there's more to the sur- more yeah. to them than meets the eye. And she keeps talking about how, like, oh, there's layers to people. There's always something more. Um, so there's that also. It's not deceptive. It's people are complicated. It's not, like, intentional. The other thing, I mean, there is more in this prologue than just the Borderlanders. This also has Varen, who is very, very black. Uh, we won't go into that today, but uh, there is a lot of deception going on with that because she's doing the... The compulsion, the compulsion. on the prisoners mm-hmm. in, in the IEO camp, which is fun. And then we have uh, the Moradin section where he's playing chess with the pieces. Yeah, that's where you get the line. Uh, it's hard to lose when you're playing both sides exactly. of the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we decided for reasons of brain cells and time that we're only going to do the Borderlander section. So that way the Varen section really gets its due because there's a lot to bite into. There. There's so much there. <laughs> and there's plenty going on in this section. Definitely. Athenael had seen mountains lower than these misnamed black hills, great lopsided heaps of half-buried boulders webbed with steep twisting passes. A number of those passes would have given a goat pause. You could travel three days through drought-withered forests and brown-grassed meadows without seeing a single sign of human habitation, then suddenly find yourself within within half a day of seven or eight tiny villages, all ignorant of the world. The Black Hills were a rugged place for farmers, away from the trade routes, and harsher now than usual. 
a gaunt leopard that should have vanished at the sight of men watched from a steep slope, not forty paces away, as she rode past with her armored escort. Westward, vultures wheeled patient circles like an omen. Not a cloud marred the blood-red sun, yet there were clouds of a sort. When the warm wind blew, it raised walls of dust. I don't know if I should do the second paragraph for you. I think that, that sets the tone. Yeah. We're in the Black Hills. And there's no wind. So no it, wind. It, no, there is a wind. Oh, there is a wind. Yeah, so we're good. The wind has risen. The book can start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's between the Borderlanders and the Caroline Grass, so fairly north. Um, the Black Hills is where um, Codswain got her lesson from a wilder and got the Paralysis net. So this is just living out in the middle of nowhere, very isolated, and we see them sneaking through that uh, area, trying to avoid any human habitation. Yeah, and we, this is also giving us that pressure of the bowl of the winds needs to get used now. Yeah, yeah, we really are at that point where things have gotten bad, right? Everybody, because the bowl of the winds is used pretty much right away in the beginning of this mm-hmm. book. Like yeah. that, that is the first section, first few chapters. So we are at peak heat. After this point, we get the bowl of the winds, and then things start to break, and we see a change in the weather walls of dust yeah walls you know, of dust when crazy. you get walls of dust it's bad it's bad, bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the dust bowl is not a pleasant time uh, i no, don't think yeah no and this is also the point where we get perspective later on like if the great lord had not relented everyone would die and the bowl of the winds is it changes that like this is a make or break point in the climate system for them so i learned apparently that tilling soil is terrible for creating dust this weekend <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So yes, I, it is. Do you think the Borderlanders were just sucking uh, <laughs> at, uh, you know, their their crop maintenance? Well, they're out of the Borderlands by now. They're not responsible for the management of this, yeah, this landscape. Black Hills, that's fair. It is probably just wild. Yeah. You know? it's, uh, but yes, no-till f- agriculture is better. Yeah. Th- no, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that. I did. I thought, I thought tilling was good for the soil. I, uh, I learned. Mm. Um, so this is uh, a meeting of multiple Borderlanders coming together. They've all sort of snuck around independently, kind of like the Red Sisters did. Yes, they split up and then regather mm-hmm. later. Yeah. Well, I, they definitely coordinated this ahead of time. They were all they were coming from the Borderlanders, all the different Borderland. Nations. nations and meeting down in yeah. the Black Hills. I don't uh, quite know why they couldn't just meet in the Borderlands. Secrecy. Oh yeah, and they're trying to get to Rand. Yeah. So they're like, hey, let's all meet up en route. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't. You don't go across town and pick your friend up when the bar's right next to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Neutral space. Neutral yeah. space. There yeah. is. There's no nation. That's a good point. Yeah. You know, so they're not invading anybody. And they talk a lot about like they're we're all allies, but we have complicated relationships so Mm -hmm. yeah neutral territory makes a lot of sense Um, yeah the 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 borderlanders have a very interesting relationship because they do share borders and i'm sure there's conflict between the nations but they have such a common enemy that they really do need to pull together but at the same time like you know the rfl and see the saldans is really weird (laughs) you know like there's definitely a different culture there you know it's this guy there's always cultural conflict when you have different cultures yeah uh, no matter how much of a unified goal that you might have yeah yeah, so they're, but they're coming together because they all know about this one prophecy that was made right at the end of the breaking, I think, is, is when that prophecy happened. Uh, that, that makes sense. Yeah, they, uh, it's definitely from Arafel, so it has to be within a thousand years because Arafel only uh-huh. existed within the last thousand years, right? Or, or it was passed down from proto Arafel. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, uh, um, to the wiki. Uh, Nachin, Nach Iman family has produced a Aes Sedai um, who had the uh, prophecy. But they all know about it. All the Borderlander nations are able to be like, hey, it, it's time to go check on this. And everyone's like, oh yeah, that. We know about that. Yes, it one was one of Karuna's forebearers. Oh. So she is a, a powerful channeler, but also her forebearer was the one who told the prophecy. Yes. Right, so it's a family. It's not secret, but it's a family knowledge drop. So yeah, they were ready to kill people to keep this secret, but they've managed to avoid it. We're in Atheniel's head, um, and she thinks about, hey, I didn't have to kill anyone. I didn't do war crimes this trip. Yay. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I guess if you're a head of state, that's an accomplishment. Um, well, yeah, slaughter. I mean, obviously the White Cloaks didn't bother. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love this line here from her where she can't decide if it would be worse if Rand is a false dragon or the dragon reborn. 
either way is bad. Right. Because <laughs> if he's a false dragon, then all of a sudden you're going to war with this guy who's the ruler of Ilian, who just became the ruler of Ilian, has all the Aiel. Like, this is that's a bad situation. If he is the dragon reborn, last battle. <laughs> like, so, you know, it's like half of, like, ah, not winning either way. It's not a good thing, right? They do not want to do this ride. It is not fun. But especially with how powerful Rand has become. If they find themselves his enemy, I, I wouldn't want to. Like, no. right now, being on the other side of Rand, I mean, he's taking out Forsaken like they're freaking candy. Yeah, very much so. No, we, the, none of them want to fight Rand by themselves. And and there is, the prophecy also says they must do it together, right? This is the blood pact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, given that some of the Bold organizations have fights to their advisors, I think, why do you think, or do you think the White Star knows about prophecy? And you don't hear them getting involved in Because it's a family secret? It's a family secret, yeah. It, it, I think that it was one of those things where, I mean, we see a lot of Aes Sedai who tell prophecies don't necessarily remember them. And so maybe she told the prophecy, it was written down by someone who was in her presence, but no Aes Sedai ever heard about it. And we've known that these four rulers, you know, we, they talk about carefully coded letters, like big secrets, like this is the biggest secret of the Borderlanders. I think part of the prophecy is that it has to be a secret type situation. So mm -hmm. like it really is the, the, the fate of the world depends on them keeping this a secret. So... I certainly think it's possible the Aes Sedai don't know exactly what's going on. But then you've got these 13 who are hanging out <laughs> with the various groups, and they have to have some clue that Rand is involved and there's something with the Last Dragon. I don't know if they know about the prophecies, and um, I don't know if they know exactly why the rulers are doing what they do. Yeah, uh, they we don't, don't get speak a about it Yeah, much. they don't speak about it, and we don't get a POV from any of those Aes Sedai that I know about. No. So yeah, uh, Athenaella is debating if this is any good or not, and she sort of talks to a few of her counselors about it. That's kind of the dialogue of the chapter. And we get told, the other choices only carry different risks, not lesser, because it's the end of the world. There are no good choices. People will die. Nations will fall. The dragon will be reborn. Like, And she's you know, frustrated by that. The simple need to act is why she's here. But it's not why she's here. She's here because prophecies need to be fulfilled, right? That's the real reason why she's here. And so she's, she says that to her Aes Sedai advisor. And then she looks over to her sword bearer, who's a fun little bit of character, because this is Lord Baldire, who Sanderson tells us is one of our only gay characters. This is, this is one of the two. And he shows up here described as nice being... What, what, what is, where's the phrase? He's got a supercilious air. He's got a biting tongue and he affected to care more for music and his clothes than anything. So he's kind of coded as gay, but Sanderson's the one that actually gave us like, mm -hmm, yes, that, that is, mm -hmm. there, there you go. You have representation, which is like, eh. But a careful reading of stereotypes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like, uh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because, I mean, we learn he's, been a general for like 20 years for a queen of a war nation. I mean, clearly he's competent, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's just he's like, underestimate me. Mm -hmm. I care more about clothes. Um, <laughs> he's, he's fussy, I, all of that. Um, he also, also fun thing, he asks Lan about Agomar acting weird in the last battle and is one of those people who keeps pushing Lan mm. to question Agomar. So he's kind of instrumental to the unraveling of Grandal's plot to mess with all the great captains. He's the one that keeps being like, this just isn't right. And Lan's like, okay, fine, third time's a charm. I'll go ask him, blah. And so he's important that, in that way. I will say, that's one of my more frustrating moments with Lan, I think, in the entire books, is like, you know this isn't right. Lan would trust his instincts faster. It takes too many pushes, in my opinion, to get Lan to do something. I feel like the first mention, Lan would be all over that, like, um, pick, a, pick, pick a metaphor. Um, <laughs> if I was going to sabotage an army, how would I do it? Yeah, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's just like, at that point, you realize that what Algamar do, is doing is sabotaging it. And he still procrastinates for a little while longer, doesn't he? I can't remember exactly. Yeah, Lan, the, the, Lan doesn't want to, like, question an older general. Yeah, and, yeah and the king of Malkir. I mean, he's, he's being Lan really hard. There is, I guess, some honor involved there in terms of, like... Yeah. Oh, this guy, Baldari? Because Baldari is the one who's smart enough to be like, Agomar's acting a little yep. off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, basically. when you're right, you're right, right? 
right? Right. Yeah, Val- Valdara is as supportive as the Aes Sedai about this choice. He's like, I don't like hiding who we are, but you have to do what you're going to do. Yeah, and Athenael is just like, whatever, it's fine. I'm a queen. I'm going to do my thing. Do you think Athenael's blade is power wrought? I mean, probably. They're hard to destroy. Yeah. I mean, it is an ancient sword. Yeah. It would make sense. But it's yeah. mostly ceremonial, so they don't use it, so they don't mm-hmm. know. But yeah, I would assume that it is. It's one of those things where, like, some say power rot. Like, power rot swords we see is like the hilt gets replaced over and over and over and over again, and it never gets a scratch, never gets a mar. It's one of those things where it's like, how do you not know? Well, if it's ceremonial, you don't take it out of its scabbard and use it. <sighs> you don't test the edge. Like, but, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's a little hand wavy. <laughs> it's a little eye of the worldism. Yes, she was. Yes. She was pretty amazing. The uh, Kiru Khan, the sword of Kiru Khan, uh, the fabled warrior queen of Aramella. Yeah, she's she's badass. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, exactly. With that sword. <laughs> she probably. Yeah. She, do we have the her story? Oh, not to hand. Um, I think I do. Yeah, but she has this great thought where she's like, I don't think that just because I'm on the throne of the clouds, the clouds will bend to my will. And then the clouds do bend to her will effectively, but that's because of other people doing other things. Oh, yeah, that is mentioned later in this chapter where it says she's beheaded a false dragon with her hands and birthed two sons either by the same man or another one. So this is the whole, like, she's both... She was a channeler, right? No, she's a queen. She's a queen? Warrior queen. Wasn't... Uh, Brigitte, she has a temper like a boar caught in briars at the best. <laughs> Not like anyone close by. Oh, that's a comment about Elaine? Oh, uh, yeah. You're like, mm, yeah, it's a comment about Elaine. I've met queens like you before. <laughs> Definitely. Um, well, isn't there that other Aes Sedai who married a false dragon and had kids by him and then gentled them or something no, like I, that? No, I think you're Am I mixing up? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, that's, I think that's you're applying Aes Sedai to a queen. But... Yeah, you know. Sometimes in the ancient histories, they're not that different because yeah. you have these yeah. warrior queens and these warrior Aes Sedai, and like that, you know, they're out doing legendary things with false dragons. Like, I wouldn't expect a queen to be the one to take down a false dragon. Right. I would expect right. that to be a Aes Sedai. So that's that's thrown yeah. off my brain. No, that's fair. Yeah. So yeah, allies of long standing, yet the times bred suspicion like flies on a midden. Too many rulers to the south had died or vanished in the last year for her to feel any comfort in wearing a crown. Whoever he was, this Althor fellow had much to answer for. (laughs) She's pissed. (laughs) She is coming for the dragon. Well, and yeah, it's very few. I think we talk about how, like, um, Berlain is the only ruler who, like, makes it through the last battle still in charge. Mm -hmm. Like, when everyone's, anyone, like, is just like, oh, Berlain, what is she doing? I'm like, the only one who survives. Not dying. Not dying. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, she really does win, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. And she gets a guarantee from the Dragon's Peace. Yeah. Yeah. And Galad. She gets Galad. He's just, you know. <laughs> she wins Galad. That's true. She does win uh, the pretty boy at the end, the prettiest boy at the end of the story. So. Hmm. It's appropriate. It's appropriate. Yeah. Now, the next thing I've got is this whole thing about this weird spire, which is yeah. just such a random thing that never shows up again. I think. It's um, emitting some sort of radiation. Mm. I think it's either a radio tower or in some way radioactive. Yeah, I like Um, that. But the way he describes it as like golden and fallen in lace, I'm thinking about like a big radio tower that's like up in the air and pumping out some sort of waves. And we do know that like if you have, if you stand in front of a uh, a really powerful radio telescope, it can cook you pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, radio waves are basically, or microwaves are basically microwaves. Yeah. And it's all light. It's all radiation. It's all radiation. So. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's non-ionizing radiation there is a difference (laughs) non-ionizing radiation does not penetrate your skin it cannot hurt you (laughs) do not be afraid it's a deep state conspiracy (laughs) the light coming off the LED bulbs is more powerful than that stuff it's really yeah it's it's a real problem um, no, but uh, <laughs> but no, th- there does seem to be some sort of invisible radiation because people die when they go near this yeah. thing. Yeah, right? I like to think it's a malfunctioning one, too. I don't think it's totally. doing what it's supposed to be totally. doing, but it's a leftover from the Age of Legends, and it's not still powered up somehow. Oh, it's First Age. Yeah. Right. I definitely oh, believe yeah, that's like yeah. our model. That's why I'm like nuclear, right? I really do. Th- it might be like somehow um, radioactive. 
right? Because there isn't there also he describes a spire in a hole in the ground, and if you get close enough to it, you sicken and die. Yeah, which always makes me think of yeah, like a radio telescope or yeah, you know. Yeah, like Arecibo yeah. or something. Only the, it cooks you. The other possibility it could be is a crater from a nuclear blast, and someone put the spire in the middle to warn people off, mm-hmm. and that it's just radiation from a uh, leftover uh, explosion. Well, it wasn't broken before th- when they put it in. I don't know. Maybe they just sent in. Yeah. Yeah. Radiation suits. Yeah. Yeah, it could yeah. be. You know, I mean, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it could be. I mean, I I, th- I imagine the accident happened. It killed a lot of people, and then they're like, "Ooh, let's put a spire up so it doesn't kill more people, right?" Like, I'll just pick these five people, yeah. send them in, they're forfeit, and then it's mm-hmm. the greater good of humanity. No, I mean, we we do we have radiation suits. We work in radiation. Like, yeah, that, there's no problem. Like, yeah, wrap up in mylar. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It does actually make a difference because a lot of times what what kills you is the dust you inhale, and the and because it's radioactive. It embeds in your lungs and you end up with radioactive dust whereas if you actually filter that dust out you can it's the exposure you get while in the area is relatively low compared to the extensive exposure you get if the dust gets into your lungs also you know radiation on your skin not quite as bad as radiation inside of you that makes sense yeah Mm. Yeah. that sounds right yeah yeah Yeah. and then ending of the Second age was the discovery of the true power. Right. <laughs> and then the end of the third age is the discovery of lighting the pipe with your mind. Yeah. Is the I guess. Teleron Riyadh power? I it don't know. You know, the world's a dream. Yeah, they discovered redemption is a thing. Uh, um. It's dreams all the way down, right? Like, <laughs> yes. There's the world's Very of dreams, much. our world's a dream from which you will wake. Like, there, there, I, I do truly believe that... Um, He's making a metaphor about like dream layers, especially being this is a book which is kind of a dream in and of itself. Inception. Dreamception. Yeah. Dreamception. Yeah. No, it's really um, they just went deeper, and so uh, yeah. <laughs> the reason it turns forever is because they're just you know how there's that multiplication of time, so they're just they're, there's so many levels down. Yep, yep that's that's mm-hmm. what's going on. Uh, and the creator is actually just we're incepting Robert Jordan, and so we've just gone so deep into his mind that we're just experiencing this on an endless loop forever. Yeah. Uh, that checks out. Yeah. Um, you want to go back to the book? Not really. <laughs> okay. Well, the next uh, page, two pages, um, is a name salad. It is Borderlander name salad. Mm-hmm. And very nearly all of these names do not show up again the whole rest of the series. This is their one opportunity to be here, and most of them presumed to live through the end of the last battle. I doubt that they all live. Um yeah, it's it's just name salad and the it, politics of the last ten years, and it, it's none of it's relevant. <laughs> it gives you a structure for the Borderlanders. I'm glad it's there. I wish he had used it a little bit more. Like bring some of these characters back, right? Uh, this is yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I said it's before, like Agolmar, yeah, Paytar, Isar. It, it it's like when um, Harriet said, "You need to cut the fourth boy," right? Yeah. Like it's you. You just. <laughs> You're not using him for anything. He's just there to round out the story. And you may use him for something in the future, but you may not. You know, and I feel like that's what all these Borderlanders are. Is like he was probably going to use them in the last battle. Um, and I'm guessing that if Jordan had wrote it, we would have seen a lot more of these minor An characters. entire book and of th- how the Borderlanders respond right, to the last exactly. battle. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, so I, I really do think that we would have gotten... Um, more details about some when we talk about name salad a lot of times we're like oh he introduced these characters and then we never see them again but a lot of times we see them in all of robert jordan's books it's only in the last three that they really a lot of these side characters just get dropped um which i i get why he did that but it does mean that some of these characters that really could have meant something at this point just don't yeah but it lets you know that there's not just one unifying mm-hmm. culture. The Borderlanders are very fragmented, and they have lots of different cultures, and, and that's that's fun world building. But there's not a lot to no. talk about, aside from the fact that the Borderlanders are complicated. Yeah. And I think the prologue is a good place to throw name salad at us, because it yes. gives us a sense of this world has depth, but also it's a prologue. This is a side story, and these are side characters in a side story. Don't worry too much about trying to m- memorize their names, unless you want to win trivia. Because as it turns out, it's an excellent source of really difficult trivia questions. (laughs) Morgan. Morgan. (laughs) Yeah. Newman. It's uh, it's fun. 
so yeah they're they're talking about you know we left the blight unguarded but the blight is quiet but the shadow never sleeps so they're you know basically hand wringing is basically what's happening is rulers hand wringing over over the decisions they've already made the, and this is something they can't control right they don't know what's going to happen when they slap rand right like right they might all die they might all die instantly right um and this is not fun for them like I'm at, like you're supposed to be fighting the last battle and here you are like hoping that the troops you left behind are enough just in case there's an, an uprising yeah like ugh, it's uncomfortable yeah and you're marching all your mm. people like potentially to death and destruction or to death and destruction i mean best case scenario you go die in the last battle right like that's mm-hmm. the best case scenario is that the last battle will happen whereas the worst case scenario is that you die sooner it's it's not great <laughs> and so as they're dithering Tenovia comes galloping in in all of her flamboyance and I really feel like Tenobia, the way she gets described here with the the things she wants from a suitor and how flamboyant she is and rearing her horse and all of that I feel like that is meant to give us a l- way to understand Fayil right because she yes. they are cousins so when you're looking through Athenaella's eyes at Tenobia being like, wow, she's so extra, <laughs> it gives you a little bit of context. It's like, this is how Seldaeans are. This is a woman that Fayil is sort of like a, a peer of. I also think it's a little bit of like, at least Fayil's not this crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, this is what I could be doing to you people. Like, <laughs> enjoy the Fayil you've got, because it could be Tenobia. Yeah. And and Tenobia does die in the last battle because of the stuff with Algomar and he, the the mismanagement of the army. She dies. Right. He sends her into battle without uh, backups, and she's supposed yeah. to basically. And and there's just a moment where she just gets overrun. And yeah, she goes tearing off into the battle, and there's no backup. There's no backup when they're supposed to be, and she just gets flanked, and they're like, "Whoop! Well, that's a loss. Regroup." <laughs> you yeah, know, like it's just everyone just. It's like, well, anyway, there she goes. And, and then the Bashirs get put in, they, you know, then Davron becomes king for like 20 minutes, and then he dies. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. I always forget the Bashirs die. Yeah. But, but it has to happen for Perrin to become yeah. um, the yeah. wolf king. Yeah, he, yeah. They are not king and queen for very long. <laughs> so, yeah, Tenobia is just extra. Yes? No. No. He, Where is he? Maybe he is with this group. He should be with this group, yeah. Kieran should be with yeah, this group. Because I he even would have gone back that. with Lord Algamar and he reported back to Lord Algamar and that's what kicked Which off this whole why, thing. Yeah. So yeah. he must be with, with Algamar's retinue. Yeah, which I'm is sure not getting he's mentioned here. here. Just, yeah, don't see okay. him. Yeah. I hadn't even thought about where Kieran was. Yeah. <laughs> but no, you're right. Okay, yeah. So much bigger. No. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he does pop back in um, in the in the last battle, where basically he's when Rand goes to meet with the Borderlanders. When they do actually finally slap him, they send Huron out. They're like, he's like, did they bring? Few, uh, you know, I told them they could only bring as many people as me. Did they bring? And uh, it's just Huron. It's just Huron. <laughs> they're like, uh, it's one man, and the the Aiel think it's pretty funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they're like, uh, yeah, you're safe. It's yeah. just one dude. Yeah, and then Rand blows up at him. Yeah, and he totally. Like, he thinks he's freaks out. He thinks he's like compelled or something. Or he's like, an illusion. Right. So he like makes him prove that it's actually him. Yeah. Well, in, in fairness, he did just get his hand burned off by. It, it, it's uh, a very fair yeah, question. Yeah. And Huron doesn't even hold it against him. Mm-mm. And then he apologizes once he's Zen Rand. He goes to Huron and apologizes mm-hmm. to him and, you know, makes Huron feel special. Huron does die in the last yeah. battle. Yeah. 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 That is terrible. I mean, I'll throw Loyal out there, but that's a... Yeah. Uh, he, yeah. Yeah. But that's because Loyal doesn't have much of a journey. He is... He's so solid. He's so loyal. He's so loyal. He is... Yeah, he's an author avatar. He doesn't need to... Like, he, he just doesn't need to be in... A, you know, he is, he's getting married, like, and he has to come to that realization <laughs> that he's... he's That being married is, is good. Oh, and, her ears. <laughs> oh, her ears are so... And her eyebrows? Mm-hmm. The eyebrows, though. Uh, this is not that kind of podcast, Seth. 
I actually did trim my eyebrows before tonight. <laughs> 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 they well before this weekend. They were all over the place. They get they get really long. Mm. And I, I swear to God, you get older and you start growing hair in places, and hair keeps. You're like, what? This didn't used to keep growing. It used to stop, and now it just <laughs> goes and goes and goes. And if I don't cut it, I, I, it doesn't. I look like Andy Rooney. <laughs> Or like Sen Bui, yeah. Ooh, now I'm imagining Andy Rooney as Sen Bui, and that works real well. Yeah. What the? Oh, no, trust me. That's, it's going, um, let's just say gravity has affected my hair. It's retreated from the top and come out everywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> what about Aes Sedai? Aes Sedai. Aes Sedai. What about Aes Sedai? <laughs> what does an eye said I say when she's trying to heal balding? I don't know what. It's just a weave. <laughs> you have told this joke to me at least three times. I have, Will I, I ever remember the punchline? No, no. No, I won't. <laughs> because I hate puns. <laughs> <laughs> I've already forgotten. <laughs> uh, it was too good of an opportunity. I couldn't, couldn't let yeah, it go. Yeah. I'll forgive you this time. So, Tenobia is rather angry that her dear uncle Davram Bashir, who she sent to bring her the head of Mazram Tame, is now working with him under another false dragon. That is, I mean, there are circumstances, but she's kind of right. <laughs> like With the information she has, she is very right to be pissed. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I send you out to get me one false dragon, and then you just serve another dragon. Like... Does my queenship mean nothing to you? Is basically where she's coming from. And she's Tenobia, so it feels extra. But yeah, it's very fair. Mm -hmm. Like, you're my general. What are you doing? Going rogue. Basically, he went rogue. He went completely rogue. He's, he's working for another ruler. He took And he took the entire army with him. Like, mm -hmm. that's called a coup. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's like, just treason. It's treason. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's bad. Now, again, we have the prophecy. The dragon breaks all bonds. Yada, yada, yeah. yada. Like, you know there's a certain argument to be made that when the end of the world is coming, you got to be loyal to the main leader, you know, but it's not going to hurt or soothe feelings or soothe her hurt feelings. <laughs> it's not going to hurt her soothed feelings. <laughs> it will definitely do that. Actually. It will hurt her soothed feelings. Uh, um, <laughs> yes. Uh, and she just, um, I lost the train of thought on that well, one. Well, Then the next thing she does is be like, Oh, also I have this uncle. And then she tries to hook Atheniel up with her uncle. Which, uh, Atheniel's like, what the? Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's this, hilarious. Uh, yeah. This is like, I never thought about me as a match. Like, she's just played matchmaker so much and, and hadn't even thought about it for herself. Which, I mean, yeah. how often do you do that? Like, you can look at someone else's problems and be like, listen, all you have to do to fix it is A, B, and C. And then you think about your own problems. You're like, there's no way. This, there's nothing I can do. There's no, my no problem is actually unique, and right. no one can solve and it. And no one else. I can has solve ever everyone else's problems. Sure. <laughs> Mine are intractable. It's very logical. Very logical. Oh, yeah, get this line. South Dane's tempers were legendary. Here, hers was wildfire and a high wind, and you could never tell what would provide the spark. That's a scary person. I would not want that person in charge of a country. Honestly, that's really a lot. Flying off the handle at a whim for something that's not predictable sucks. That's just, it's tough to work with. It's tough to be around. It's tough, tough to be ruled by. Yeah. It's a wondrous how day is doing as well as it is, honestly. Well, she's got some good advisors and she hasn't it's been in true. power that long, so. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Her on Twitter would be. Yeah. Yeah. It's. It's one of those things where, like, yes, she may be tech... He's basically saying she's very technically competent at being a ruler, but she might be a little hot-headed sometimes. You know, it's definitely, like, yes, he's saying she's a good ruler, but, like, he's also, like, she's 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 a little crazy. So, like, I get that she's competent, and she has... You know, again, he basically raised her, so she's doing what he says. Um, it's one of those things where I could see her being a good ruler when she got older and tempered down a little bit. Uh, like I don't think it's the fundamentals that are the problem. It's the emotions and um, the selfishness and the lack of foresight. Yeah. And that just takes age sometimes. <laughs> She's eight years older than Fayil. So, yeah, that's, yeah. She's in her 20s, and she should be married, according to Athenael. She's old enough she should be married and doing her, her queenly thing. I love the description of why she's not married. <laughs> yeah. Because I've known those people. I've been those people. <laughs> I need a perfect partner. She has to be 
gorgeous and intelligent and like everything I do and support me in everything except when I don't want her to. And I don't want to tell her that. Yeah. The contradictory. And then I grew up a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) And then learned that perfect people don't exist. And if you're looking for the perfect person, you're going to be very, very lonely. So, eyes to die. There's not a lot about them, but there's 13 of them. Yeah. That, that's a bit of a problem. First, they have no eyes to die. And then they have eight. And that's, whoa. And then it's 13. It's like, it escalates so quickly. I don't really understand where the eyes to die came from. I read through it and I was like, they're, he's like, oh, we got one advisor and then eight and then four and then 13. And I was like, wait, where did they come from? Well, each one thinks that like, it's like, oh, I'll just bring mine. It'll be fine. But then there's a lot of them and so they've all brought at least one because Tenobia brings five and she's like I don't know how they figured out what I'm doing they seem to want to just come along for for shits and giggles no no big deal right that and that's what I'm wondering why are they along like I mean obviously they see a bunch of borderlanders moving yeah I don't know and do we even get their names and I mean no I don't think we do I mean we we know that there's the one that Elida sent to be with Tenobia Mm -hmm. which is Mamara but I don't think that we have names for most of them. Oh, Coladara. Yeah, we've got Coladara. Oh, right. So what happens is Pater has one Aes Sedai with him. And then she has visitors for reasons that are never expounded on. So I'm, I'm convinced that Jordan had a follow-up to this. That, that he was going to do more with this group. It does feel like setup. It really does feel yeah. like a lot of setup. And, and while I like this scene that, that Sanderson wrote, I get the feeling that this is something that just got left behind and, and, and wasn't clarified. And Sanderson did what he could with it. But there's, there's just a lot implied here and a lot of characters that I feel like really had potential. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's 13 of them, but there's some weird coincidence. Yeah, severe and coincidence. I mean, and that's what really pisses Rand off. That's why he's super that's angry. That's what breaks. That when he confronts yeah. them. Is he is like, you dare bring 13 Aes Sedai? It's, it's like a bare-knuckled threat, right? That's, that's about mm-hmm. as big of a threat as you can get to the Dragon Reborn as being like, yeah, we're showing up and here's 13 Aes Sedai. Don't blink. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, Athenaeal is like this is ridiculous and and Pytar pulls a Caesar and a mat and says the dice are out of the cup it's just another way of saying the die is cast no yeah 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 which is it's it's always fun to spot those little bits of historical references and I mean they are um gamblers Jordan likes to call generals gamblers and Mm -hmm. and link those together that there's a certain amount of risk taking you have to do in the fog of war and so no matter how much information you have you do have to gamble you do have to toss the dice and so you know we talk about Pedro Nile uses that phrase very early on before Matt ever does Uh, um, it's time to toss the dice you know there's there seems to be a thread of great generals have some gambler in them Mm mm-hmm yeah. 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 yeah I you mean, have to risk people. What, what's higher, money or someone's life? Right. What's worth more? Don't. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say don't ask. <laughs> don't ask Jeff Bezos that because he's he's got an opinion. There's a lot of people with complicated answers to that question. Mm-hmm. Not that many people, but enough. We do get this reference: Naya and Isara's Aelsling vanished without a trace. Apparently, those were. Um, I read a note that uh, those were two people who wrote in Robert Jordan. Uh, yes, yeah, I, I read about that. Yeah. Some friends wrote RJ and were like, "Hey, will you put us in the books?" And so he slapped some eyes to die into a chapter. It was like, "There you go, put you in there." So that's Nina and Eisling. Neither yeah. of them are Black Aja. They're just yeah, just fans. Just fans. Just fans. Yeah, <laughs> those, those are fan. That's a fan insert. So yeah, the name definitely name salad. <laughs> yeah, lots of names, Alan. But um, you know, there's 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 tasty, crunchy carrots and and uh, lettuce and right, like kind of like the fact that Karuna is the sister of the King of Arafel. We knew that, but now we're seeing it from the other side of like, oh, the King of Arafel is really nice to Aes Sedai because he likes his sister, who's mm-hmm. a nice Sedai, and it just gives you that little bit of depth. It's name salad, but it gives you depth and it crunch, does. crunchy. And then Athenael is like, or no, not Athenael, but one of them says it may be well, oh, Esar says, it may be well to have 13 eyes to die with us farther south. Like, they're going to try to gentle Rand, which is like, I don't think that would have gone well. Even if he was a false dragon, I don't I don't think that that would have gone well. No. They tried to still him. That's not going to happen. But hey, why not? 
And then, yeah, I have this whole discussion about Athenael and Kalyan Ramson, and she's like, oh, he's looking at me like a woman. This is nice. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I like to think that they get together uh, after. I don't remember if they live. Oh, they do? Yeah, they they do. do. Okay, sweet. Nice. They should go honeymoon somewhere, not cold. Do they survive the last battle? Oh, yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. They do kind of the loyal era thing, and they're like, yeah, I'll just get married on the road. It's cool. We're monarchs. I mean, not that Loyal and Aerith are monarchs, but you know what I mean. (laughs) And so, yeah, we wrap up the ending with the uh, statement, the meeting had only one real purpose, a simple and ancient ceremony of the Borderlanders that had been recorded only seven times in all the years since the breaking. So seven times the Borderlanders have rode to confront a false dragon, or six times times in the previous this would be the seventh which again that's a lot of slaps but this is also you know this, i feel like the seven is an important number like he is the seventh person they've investigated mm-hmm. it's actually impressive they managed to keep it a secret having ridden forth seven times before and done this ceremony seven times before i wonder if they did this exact thing seven times or if it's just the level of oath that they've done seven times yeah mm-hmm. like I don't, I don't know. But yeah, it's this, it's, it's presented like there's magic that bonds them together, but it's really just like giving each other tetanus. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's, you just cut your palm, which first of all makes no sense. Never made any sense to me. I hate that trope. No. Yeah. Right. I know. But then it's like, there's no blood magic except for the dark friends. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't really quite know. I think it's closer to an oath. Um, in the way that Lan would swear, like L- D- right. Lan would never break an oath, and a blood oath would be even worse. Like this is this is the only thing that is more powerful than um, what Amarlin Swan, uh, thank you, swore to um, Bryn. Oh, like yeah. how do you get yeah. more powerful than that? You do a blood oath. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah and then after yeah. that, you do the oath rod, and then after that, you take off the oath rod and sort of the dark one, and that's a lot worse. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, they are now committed to the death. Four hands reached out and met, gripped heart's blood mingling, dripping to the ground, soaking into the stony dirt. We are one to the death, Isar said, and they all spoke with him. We are one to the death. By blood and soil they were committed. Now they had to find Randall Thor and do what needed to be done, whatever the price. Dun, dun, dun. One slap. <laughs> <laughs> I love, like, that's so great when they're like, oh, we have to do, and you're like, are they going to kill them, or are they going to, it's like, no, they're going to slap them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and ask him a question. Yeah. So. He could have answered the question wrong, and then it would have been a fight. Yeah, then and they that, would have just all mm-hmm. gone in, all in. Yeah. They did like say that. they could come in handy when they go south, and I think that's what they were referencing. But yeah. it, it, it does seem like, reading back, Tenobi is like, oh, yeah, they just showed up randomly. They were surprised. I was surprised. Yeah. There's no explanation of where they were traveling to, where they were traveling from. It, it's, it's pattern. It's pattern and Taviran that Rand, I guess, needed 13 Aes Sedai to confront him. It, it helps set him set off his anger to the max, which it, it just helps push him into that ultimate Darth Rand. Mm. It, it helps set him, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if that was necessary. I think he was pretty angry already, personally, but... Yeah. That, there may yeah. have been a time limit, right? That if he didn't go deep enough, fast enough to basically break and snap and come back, that he would have just sort of slowly corrupted. Right. It's like this needs to escalate quickly. This needs to escalate quickly <laughs> enough that you can be, you can reintegrate. Because if, if it hadn't escalated that quickly, he would have continued to drift, continued to get more insane and be maybe beyond the point of reintegration being possible. Yeah. And then you would have had, you know, just uh, LTT taking over Rand's brain. Which would have sucked sure yeah yeah the problem is if you concentrate it enough it destroys the world like you know there's that whole like yeah yeah you you, you gotta you have to be very careful right um yeah when when preparing a dragon reborn to go into the last battle you must be very careful with how much you increase the angst Mm. the rate at which you raise the stakes it's very specific i I like uh two cups of sorrow (laughs) uh (laughs) half a cup of anguish uh, and keep it on a low simmer low simmer definitely for about two years and and put a blowtorch on it right Right. well you right 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 
yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh yes, well, yes. yes. The, the chronic pain adds that like the the texture to the yeah. It's the like greasing thing. the pan first. You just mm-hmm. have that nice base of chronic pain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and the taint. Yeah, <laughs> coat and taint for uh, a nice <laughs> chocolate covered ta- uh, treat. <laughs> it's the spicy dragon reborn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can you tell we're punch drunk? <laughs> Oh God, the marinara reborn. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, in in the um, cookbook that the Blue Watcher put together, which is on the auction, there is a banana reborn bread recipe. Nice. Because <laughs> we we wadified all of the names of the recipes. So banana bread. I mean, it, and bananas are literally dying when you make banana bread. So it's literally bananas reborn when you make banana bread. So so banana reborn bread. <laughs> I right. don't, except when they're correct. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just imagining the banana as Rand as like he uses the tainted power and that's why the banana slowly turns brown. It's and that channeling tainted like, sighting. It, absolutely. And it's that thing, it's like, exactly, you know? And, and, and in like the first three books, he's like that like starchy green banana and then all of a sudden he turns brown and you're like dude when were you ripe and he's like right in the middle of the shadow rising yeah for, for sure. like for like right for down. like two <laughs> chapters and you didn't eat me and i'm like oh man so yeah it sounds more like an <laughs> avocado honestly yeah, yeah why do you think it's gold it's yeah, the, gold the, for the gold for, for the yellow the banana yeah and on that scintillating note <laughs> uh should we call this recording and go drink beer i would love to do that staring at me awkwardly Uh, have i mentioned i got into podcasts so i didn't have to do this live (laughs) yes many times okay i love you guys you really do you're wonderful you've been one great uh yes this is my first in-person recording (laughs) thank you thank you thank you very much oh thank you this is this is very fun i wanted to be an actress for the longest time and then I went to high school drama department and I was like nah never mind so it's hilarious to me that I now have this stage like experience yeah. again like oh, I didn't expect book reading to be how I got here but here we are yeah, it, it is, is a very welcoming it stage you, yeah you, you this has just been wonderful and, and it's been such a fun weekend for me and um we, we will be sleeping the entirety of Monday and Tuesday. After, <laughs> but that's fine. Let's go to work on Monday. <laughs> we'll see. I'll be uh, a little out of it. Mm. But yeah. first thing all I have to do is chop vegetables. Nice. If I lose a finger, it's not my You've fault. You've got nine other fingers. All right. Yeah. No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Totally. Totally. I don't. I can. I can mostly type. Um, <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. 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 It, mm. Ooh. I did. The. A good chainmail glove actually does sound really cool. Um, I'd love to have one on my left hand while with the knife in my right. I've I've seen that, but that's one. I don't. I do too many sloppy. other tasks. <laughs> it's like getting it on and off is constantly. I'm not chopping like for th- hours. I'm chopping for like ten minutes, and then I'm cooking something, and then I'm you know. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. It is. It is very gross. Yeah. Also, okay. have you seen my hands? They're thick. Getting my, I cannot get my hand into gloves easily, and it's very hard to find gloves that have thick enough fingers. Because larges just get longer, and my hands aren't long; they're thick. Yeah, and so I have. So it's like I can't. Get it like won't fit on my finger, but then there's like a bunch of stuff hanging off the end of it. It's it's. This like, is very important post show. It's extremely talk, important. It's keeping me talk. from a beer, sir. <laughs> no, it's not. Go. Okay, all right. <laughs> thanks, everyone online. You're thank all you amazing. Online. And I thanks really to Rob it. again for broadcasting us. So yeah, thank you, Rob. Um, yeah, I think I think we're done. Oh yes. Oh please. Yes. Um, the problem is the section after the one we're doing is um, just massive. It'd be like a three-hour 
it's just hard to hard to split up. So it was one of those things where we had to make a choice of like either we're gonna because it's the the Varen doing compulsion one after this, and it's like is a lot thirty pages. There's so much detail. We decided we'd rather be uh, well rested and um, <laughs> having brain cells. Having brain cells <laughs> <laughs> before we really uh, attack the more complicated thing. So there's there's plenty of Borderlander shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> so we get to c- talk about uh, the Borderlanders, and so. Uh, there's a lot of name salad, but it's uh, I think it's still a fun chapter. And there's the whole like unspoken prophecy that they're they're talking yeah, around. Yeah, we don't get for books and books, books and, and books. books. Yeah, so that's. Did you bring that up by the way? Hey, Radia. What? I just made up a joke for your character. Oh yeah. Yeah. Why, why is there an ink smudge uh, between Varen's eyes? I don't know why. Because Varen knows. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. But yeah, in case anybody forgot, we are on Path of Daggers. That's what we're starting today. And also, remember, there is a Path of Daggers that we both defaced, I mean autographed, in the auction. That auction is still open. The auction has crossed $3,000. So you guys are amazing. So that's our, that was our goal. So we have a creature goal. Everything else is gravy. Yeah, the, does, there's definitely one person who is carrying the weight of that. And so we need to all spare them the agony of winning everything. So get in there and bid. <laughs> we don't talk about that because it's full of dad jokes. <laughs> I will bail fire that. <laughs> And anyone who really, really, really donates a lot of money, I will then send a copy of the joke books to Radia just as a uh, yeah. We're closing the auction now. No, no, no. I you you have to find out the hard way. <laughs> but yeah, Path of Daggers, because book eight. Book eight, We've made guys. it to book eight. We are almost to our 400th episode. We're almost to our fourth year, and we're to the eighth book. Yeah. And and it's been a little minute since we actually sat down and talked to each other about Wheel of Time. We took a break, which was... Very needed. Very needed and very nice. It, yeah, it was really mostly so you all could catch up. Right. That's what that's, we were hoping. Yeah. yeah. The number of people who are like, I'm just a year behind. It's fine. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> 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 you know, and, and I've said this a million times, but the goal is to create more of an archive of something that people can go back and listen to more so than, oh, you need to listen to it today or tomorrow. So it's um, not that urgent. No, uh, I, I love. And that's one of the reasons why we also don't, you know, rush on these episodes. Yeah. We're not trying to get them out for a, a show or a release date or anything like that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So are we ready to kick this guy I- off? I think we are, especially because Uncle Ulti is now showing up. So we are ready to get the show on the road. Thank you for listening to the Wheel of Time Spoilers podcast. Rate us in the Apple Podcast app or support us on Patreon. Is that good enough?